that, that I follow in the footsteps of uh, my predecessor, Archbishop Petro Mata, who is the co-chair of the National Council for Building a Credit Fiji. John Sammy's book falls in line, falls into a uh, literary genre, uh, genre as a, a history book. And uh, as a history book, uh, it contributes to understanding society, and historical analysis is a uh, key to understanding how society is. It investigates crucial questions such as where are we coming from and where we are going. Uh, historical analysis relativizes current events and problems by placing them on a broader historical perspective. And also it views the present situation as a social and historical process or construct. It reflects on what future will be like if present and past trends continue. And it prevents what historians call a future shock. A historical consciousness recognizes that human beings not only make history, but that they also destroy history. Human beings therefore are responsible for shaping history. The world's future lies in the values and decisions and actions of the present human community. And since human beings are capable of creating and destroying history, they have a key role in the transformation of history and society. History can transform its own configuration and direction, but it can only achieve this with human cooperation. And therefore, human beings have an ethical and moral and practical obligation towards the transformation of society. Paulo Freire, a renowned Brazilian uh, educator, says that historical consciousness is a vital tool for people's liberation and empowerment. He argues that uh, historical consciousness empowers people to be subjects of their history rather than just being mere uh, passive objects of history. Another well-known uh, historian, American historian Gordon Wood says that while history may not teach us the lessons how to guide the present and the future, it does, however, have a profound effect on our consciousness and how we ought to live. He has that we read or study history because it has something to say to us. If history has nothing to say to us, then it makes no sense to read or study about it at all. And he said, I could. History is important to us. The knowledge of the past can have a profound effect on, the, on our consciousness and our, on our sense of ourselves. History is a supremely humanistic discipline may not teach us particular lessons, but it does tell us how we might live in a world today. Some have said that history for a society is like memory for an individual. Uh, the Greek word for memory is anamnesis. Uh, there's a word very close to anam anamnesis, is amnesia, <laughs> which is totally the opposite. It's a loss of memory. We don't want to put it that way. So without memory, the individual is isolated and cut off from where uh, she or he has been and who she or he is. And Woods adds that uh, history gives us a sense of where we have come from and how we became what we are. And contends that historical awareness gives us the best guide for shaping the present and the future. The People's Charter, My Role on a Better Fiji for All, by John Simon, is a historical book intended to give us such historical consciousness. The book records the interim government's strategic plan following the 2006 coup. The People's Charter for Change and 
progress presents the Mbali Marama interim government strategy. And uh, in John Sami's book, you'll find this quote of uh, Mr. Mbali Marama's address in 2007 to the United Nations uh, as General Assembly. And I'd just like to quote a few paragraphs from that because it lays down the vision of that time. And I quote, to achieve all this, the interim government has launched a major national initiative referred to as the People's Charter for Change and Progress. Uh, it's abbreviated, abbreviated as PCCP. Through PCCP, the broad cross-section of Fiji's people will fully be engaged and involved through meaningful consultative and participatory processes to develop a comprehensive agenda of actions and measures as Fiji's own way of addressing its problems. I submit that the PCCP initiative, once fully underway, will represent a truly national collective effort of Fiji's people, and in particular its leaders in civil society, in the interim government, and indeed also in the military, working together to get Fiji out of the deep rut. The People's Charter, once formulated and adopted, will provide the frame, strategic framework or fundamental foundation within the interim government and also successive elected governments will be ex expected to operate. And that was the great vision behind the, the, the chart. However, on the 17th of November 2011, John Sami, Mr. John Sami and the late Archbishop Peter Matata, co-chair of the PCCP, wrote to Bani Marama to express their concern, uh, concerns on issues related to the Charter and its leadership, and uh, made recommendations on the way, which they call way forward measures and actions. And today, with the book looking back 13 years since PCCP was published, John Sami asks the critical question and most important question in the book. And I quote, why the Fiji First political party led government uh, of Mr. Ben Marama have since the general election of 2014 and today become so conspicuously silent in regard to the people's child. The vast majority of the people of Fiji who have embraced the people's child need to and must know why. In this overall context, the fundamental question persists. Where to now for Fiji and for its people? And of course. And to add to Mr. Sami's questions, uh, these are questions that I raised myself. Why does, why does a strategic plan with a broad consultative uh, process uh, for developing uh, a nation gets, gets lost? And why did government drop or forget or got into amnesia about this chapter? And, uh, and why does the voice of the majority gets lost and the minority voices have the final say in Fiji. So this, and, and at the bottom of this is who makes decisions. And this is, as you know, is a political question needing a political analysis. And behind the analysis is the form of power that is, has been exercised in Fiji's history. So the question uh, that uh, many of us will raise is why? Why what has happened? Or in the, the social analysis question that we, we ask the why of the what? Why did what happen? Is a fundamental why question that, that we want to ask. So I'll try to give a, a, a little my own explanation of a study that I did on, uh, on uh, 
and politics in Fiji, which was part of my dissertation, but it was the, the dissertation was getting too big, so I dropped this one from uh, the, the paper. And it, it's called about uh, the, at the time, it, it was, I call it the Ital politics. So a, a key characteristic of power in Fijian history is of ethnic politics. And ethnic politics and its corollary, the patron clan politics is a global phenomenon. The late uh, Professor Alumita Durtalo argued that mainstream politics in Fiji uh, extensively used patron clan politics. In his book, Institutions and Ethnic Politics in Africa, Daniel Posner uh, posits that all societies are made up of various uh, ethnic cleavages. These cleavages are based on religion, ethnic origins, language, tribe, and other dimensions. And so the goal and the most commonsensical strategy for of politicians would be to politicize a particular ethnic cleavage or group which best serves his or her political interests. And Posner adds that there are three basic reasons why politicians choose a particular ethnic cleavage as the base of their political campaign. First, people want resources from the state. <coughs> Second, they believe that having someone from their group, ethnic group of their cleavage in a position of political power will facilitate their access to those resources. And three, people understand that the best way to get someone from their ethnic group into a position of political power is to build or join a political co coalition with fellow group members. And uh, another person that has written on this is Sarah Benny Perry, sorry. And his book is called No Condition is Permanent, The Social Dynamics of Agrarian Change in Sub-Saharan Africa. And he says, patron clan politics is a political relationship that is innate to almost society. So this is part of the way the game looks it. Uh, I see it be much smiling. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, but that's, that's the way you gain uh, political allegiance. And so it, she says that uh, political clan, uh, patron clan politics is a relationship uh, between those who have the resources and those who need the resources. And uh, another person that has written on it, if you Google this patron clan politics, you can get a lot of uh, things there. Another person is, say, Bruce Berman says that. Uh, uh, the framework of patron clan politics is based on three basic factors. The, the, the relationship between two parties of unequal uh, status. Number two is based on the, the reciprocity of uh, goods. I deliver goods, you provide your fidelity, your service to you. And the very informal face-to-face -face contact between the two parties of the two people. Now, what are the consequences of the, this kind of uh, politics? patron clan politics. Uh, it has social consequences. And from here, we hope to answer why maybe such a broad consultative, consultative uh, strategic plan gets dropped or forgotten. Social consciences are the one patron clan politics do not educate and empower people to question the root cause of their problems and identify ways of solving them. Why? Because under patron client uh, politics, uh, rural dwellers and uh, you know, uh, workers believe, uh, we are held to believe that the government holds the solution to all our problems. And, uh, and even when government comes around, they have the answers to the problems. Yeah? And I was in Vanuolo, but that's how people from the education department and other government depart departments approach rural dwellers. They come and give us instructions without not even asking the question, how is education going, what's the problems, uh, what, uh, what are your needs? Uh, they, have, they come with the, the, the answers. And so, uh, 
some books use this uh, name. The big boys use the state's resource and their wealth to secure political support from the small people. <coughs> uh, patron claim politics focuses on this uh, didactic uh, relationship. As a result, we don't talk about root causes of problems. And so these problems are not addressed. And there are no, because of that, there are no long-term developments. Number two, patron client politics neglects national development. Why? Because the patron client politics is based on these short-term gains and interest between the patron and the client. And therefore, <coughs> national long-term uh, developments could not receive the primary focus and commitment they deserve. Because patron client politics is more concerned how do I please my client so that he keeps me uh, supporting him so that they, I get, he gets around his people and I get all his votes and uh, <coughs> support. So patron client politics directs its, uh, its resources and energy to to this privileges or ethnic interest or religious interest as we see in Fiji. That has uh, uh, churches have been uh, <coughs> A victim of uh, politicization. Number three, politics, patron clan politics exploits and is vulnerable to corruption. It is a private agreement, unwritten, highly personal in content. And this private nature of the patron clan of, uh, politics opens up to corruption. Number four, patron clan politics breeds a culture of silence. And this is serious. And that's why we've had so many coups and we don't talk and only afterwards, after a long time, then we get the strength to talk. Uh, in the patron client uh, relationship, clients are indebted to the patrons. So if you give me $1,000, I keep my mouth shut. Otherwise, I will not receive any more $1,000 from uh, I become a victim of this uh, culture of Silence. So already there is a deadly culture of silence in the, just the traditional Fijian uh, custom and in a patriarchal society like this. And then, then when you use this kind of patron client politics, uh, there is a double uh, silence of cul uh, culture of silence that impacts us. And so Boro Freire again says uh, that. Uh, in the culture of silence, it gives a situation where people have come to accept their social problems passively. That's why when coups happen, it takes time for us to, to speak. Or once the the patron clan comes in, we present either or our matinee or we just go into amnesia and then forget. It. And the last one is. Uh, that even for political parties, uh, patron client politics has, uh, has a consequence because patron client politics is based on these short term relations between the, the big guys and the small people. And political parties tend to be politically inconsistent and lack long term plans. And, uh, and, and, and patron client politics is only concerned with the immediate problems in front of our face and therefore they are only relevant to certain conditions <coughs> that change too often but the national is the big thing that we do not do this one to be changing too often so the thesis of my uh, speech today is one Fijian politics in, since the colonial time has been characterized by this patron client politics. And you can judge yourself a bit to the present day whether that is present or has changed or not. Number two, that patron client politics focuses on maintaining that relationship between the big guys and the small. And then number three, it then lacks this long term vision and strategic plan. And maybe the reason why uh, important document as the People's Charter that involved a broad consultation, which is the normal process 
that you want to do when you want to create a vision, a vision that represents the majority of people gets forgotten. And, and that's the big question that uh, for Mr. Johnson in this book. Why has the chat been silenced? The way forward, it, I, it, it is not for the churches. We, we are not, I'm not a politician. I am a bishop, 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. Uh, so we don't want to take over your role as uh, politicians. Neither do we want to make policies and come up with policies. Rather, the church seeks to inspire the state and, in particular, its political institutions with the beauty and the goodness uh, of. Uh, I will say this because I'm Catholic, I can only speak from a Catholic uh, tradition, the goodness of Catholic social teaching in order to bring about a more just society. So our social doctrine of the church has two, two main purposes, to set forth the requirements of a just social action as they appear in the gospel. Number two, in the name of justice to denounce social, economic, political actions and structures whenever they contradict the gospel message. And, uh, and the church wants to build a just society and to seek to do so on the solid foundations of the four fundamental values of truth, freedom, justice, and love. There's one thing that I, uh, this is a little bit on the side, that I, I, something new that I know now about the people's chapter that I did not know before. Pity that he's not here, Archbishop Matata, that, uh, that I uh, it cleared up some of the questions that I had in my mind, and, and, and John Sonny's book uh, brought that out. And that was they critiqued the interim government together, John Sonny and the Archbishop Matata, when they were beginning to be not consistent to the charter. And in the book, you will see at the back a letter written by John Sonny and the Archbishop calling the Prime Minister that he need to, you know, reconsider and make a statement and, and come back to the, to the charter. And uh, that, that, that is something that I did not know. And I, I see the charter and Archbishop not that in a new way now. I had a little bit critical view at that time. And so I, I, that's one thing that I really appreciate about this book. I tried to bring his uh, nephew with me just to for him to hear this. And sometimes the Archbishop has been, uh, you know, criticized of being pro uh, uh, which is not. So I recommend that you buy this book. And uh, those who will be listening, that it's a good book. It's a historical book, and it tells us where we have come from. <coughs> why and where we have gone astray. And I have tried to explain why the government has forgotten the charter. And consequently, that the old politics of patron client politics should be eliminated. I thank Mr. John Sani for donating the sales of this book to the Foundation of Education of the Needy Children. And this gives me very much great honor to launch the Fiji people's chat. <coughs>